Hello, welcome to Bob's Dungeon. My name is Bob. I'll be your host. In the early 90s, White Wolf Publishing put out a game that pretty much took the gaming world by storm. And they came out with Vampire the Masquerade. At the time, Dungeons Dragons was in its second edition, and Vampire the Masquerade was very unexpected, and it became very popular, and it was our first look at the World of Darkness and the Storyteller system. With its popularity, of course, they made more games to go along with it, such as Mage the Ascension, Werewolf the Apocalypse, Wraith the Oblivion, and so forth. And all of these games, they use the same rule system and were set in the same world, the world of darkness. So you could combine them together and run them as the same game, even though each of them were their own individual thing. So you have your werewolves with your vampires and throwing mages and what have you. Well, eventually TSR went bankrupt. And so there was no really big competitor against White Wolf. And they became even more popular. But then Wizards of the Coast stepped in and they bought the rights to Dungeons and Dragons. And they came out with Dungeons and Dragons 3rd Edition. Which was a hit from the get-go. And so they had some real competition again. Well, after some years, it was announced by Wizards of the Coast that they were going to end 3rd edition and come out with a 4th edition. So, at this time, most of the game books in the World of Darkness was in their 3rd and 4th edition. So, they decided they were going to end the World of Darkness and do something new. So, they came out with, they published books so that you can end your World of Darkness games. Jahana for the vampires, Apocalypse for the werewolves, and so forth. And they ended the World of Darkness. Then they came out with a new World of Darkness with new stories, new options, new ways to play, and so forth. And in this new World of Darkness, Vampire became the Requiem, Mage became the Awakened, and the werewolves became the Forsaken, which is what we're going to talk about in this video. Werewolf the Forsaken, first edition. This book has 317 pages and a copyright of 2005. It was published by White Wolf Games, and all of the artwork in this book is in black and white, with some of them having a little splash of brown, which is kind of neat. So let's go ahead and look at that artwork. This is the first picture we see when we open the book. The pictures in this book are in black and white with a splash of brown throughout. And the artwork in this book is really decent. And it goes a long way to showing what the werewolves look like and how they function in the game. And the artwork also sets a proper tone and mood for this game. To play this game, what you're going to need is course a copy of this book and a copy of the core rule book for the world of darkness and as many ten-sided dice as you can get your hands on. The core rule book will give you all the rules you need in order to play the game and give you all the information you need to build a human character in the world of darkness. The werewolf book We'll continue that character creation by giving you the information you need to place a werewolf template over that character in order for them to be a werewolf and play as one of the Forsaken. And even though the character creation is in the core rule book, and I did a video on that book before and talked about it, we're going to go over character creation one more time as it pertains to the werewolves. First thing you'll do is you'll pick a virtue and a vice, which replaces the nature and demeanor from the old world of darkness. You'll then figure out your attributes. There are three categories of attributes. 
your mental, your physical, and your social attributes. Each of these have three other attributes tied to them, which gives you a total of nine attributes. Each of those attributes will have one dot in them for free. And a dot represents how many dice you'll roll when you make a test with that attribute. And what you do is you pick a primary category for those attributes. And the primary category you pick, either physical, social, or mental, will get five dots to split up amongst them, not counting the free dot. Your second most important will get four dots, and your least most important will get three dots. The attributes themselves, you have intelligence, wits, and resolve for your mental attributes. You have strength, dexterity, and stamina for your physical attributes. And you have presence, manipulation, and composure for your social attributes. After you get your attributes figured out, you figure out your skills. Your skills are broken up into three categories. Mental skills, social skills, and physical skills. Skillless in this version of the World of Darkness is a lot smaller than in the original World of Darkness. It condensed down a lot, which is pretty cool. You get no free dots in any of the skills. You pick a primary category, and that primary category will get 11 dots to split up amongst the skills underneath. Your second most important will get 7, and your least most important will get 4. You then pick three specialties, and you'll gain a fourth specialty through your tribe that you pick. There are a list of specialties that are associated with that tribe, and you get a free specialty out of there. And after you get that figured out, you'll pick a tribe. The tribes in this game are the Blood Talons, the Bone Shadows, the Hunters in the Darkness, the Iron Masters, the Storm Lords, and you have a group called the Ghost Wolves, which really isn't a tribe. These are werewolves that don't belong to a tribe, so they've been lumped into a group called the Ghost Wolves, which is kind of neat. You'll then pick an Allspice, and there are several Allspices in this, one for each stage in the moon, total of five. And it'll give you some information about your character, depending on what allspice you pick. You then gain three dots for Renown. And there are five different types of Renown in this game. And Renown helps you build what rank your werewolf is. Which you know where, how spirits relate to them and so forth. And you have... A one group of renown that is prioritized by your tribe, and another one by your allspice. Each of those will gain one dot from the three you have, and the third dot you can place wherever you wish. You'll then get three dots for gifts, and again, you'll place one dot in a gift offered from your tribe, a second dot in a gift offered from your allspice. And the third dot you can spin how you want. You can use that third dot if you wish to buy a point in rituals, which will allow you to do rites, which is pretty cool. You'll then get seven points for merits, and the merits are covered in the World of Darkness book, but yet there are some werewolf specific merits in this book that you can pick. You'll then figure up your health. Your health is your stamina plus your size. Full-grown human, which is what your character should be in this game, is size 5. You'll then figure up your willpower, which is your resolve and your composure added together. You'll figure up your defense, which is the lower number of either your dexterity or your wits. You'll then figure up your initiative, which is your dexterity and your composure added together. You'll figure up your speed which is your strength and your dexterity added together. You have a starting harmony rating of 7, and the 
Harmony Reign takes the place of humanity, which is what vampires use, which tells you how bad of a sin you can get away with for a werewolf. Werewolves have their own sins. <laughs> you then have a primal urge of one to start with, and it can go all the way up to ten. Primal urge is a lot like the vampire's blood potency. It tells you how much essence overall your character can hold, how much essence he can spin per round, and how high he can raise his attributes and so forth. You'll then have a starting essence pool equal to your starting harmony. And the essence is a power source that you can spin to use your gifts and activate other things, which is pretty nifty. The book has lets you know all the different ways you to use your werewolf, how they can go into a death rage and kill everything around them. And talks about the different way werewolves transform. There are five different stages of the werewolf form. The human, the near human, the wolf man, the near wolf, and the wolf. The wolf man, or Karu, is basically the war form. You can stay in any of the forms for as long as you want, except for the war form. In the war form, you have a very limited time you can be in that form, because you're constantly about ready to kill everything around you. Your friends, your enemies, everything. Because you're pretty much raging. Which is pretty nifty. It gives you a look at the history of the werewolves, where they got their start. And the condensed version is basically there was a spirit known as Father Wolf and he used to keep the spirits in the spirit world and the living creatures in the living world and he created the werewolves to help him in his hunts and eventually he got old and couldn't carry on with that job so a bunch of the werewolves got together and they killed him so they could take his place and upon doing that they became known as the forsaken the werewolves that did not help and wanted nothing to do with it became known as the pure and there are three types of pure. There are the fire touched, the ivory claws, and the predator kings. Then you have the bell hounds, but they aren't really pure. These werewolves kind of hide out as either forsaken or pure in order to tear everybody down. But anyway, after they killed Father Wolf, they continued with his work of keeping the spirits in the spirit world in the living creatures in the living world. And a lot of the spirits hate them for usurping Father Wolf's position. And they became known as the Forsaken, which is pretty nifty. You have the hosts in here, which is another other groups that you can go up against. And the hosts are kind of shapeshifters, but instead of having an animal form, they have like a multi-form like a bunch of rats or a bunch of spiders or what have you. And they are usually hunted down by the werewolves and killed as much as possible. And then you go up against a lot of different spirits. And if you can befriend them, you can have a spirit totem if you wish. But this game gives a list of rules and practices that the werewolves will follow and stuff. There are things called lodges, which are specialty packs, which usually are made up of one pack and do a specific job for that pack. Uh, they're usually made up of a specific tribe and usually do specific things for that tribe. But they can be made up by multiple tribes and do a specific task. Some of them are just temporary and break up after the job is done and others last for many many years so that's pretty nifty and it also talks about the werewolf's territory territory is very important to a werewolf in this game you're charged with keeping that territory under control 
you get to shape and mold that territory as you see fit. What spirits get to come in, what spirits have to go, and so forth. So that's pretty nifty. And in the back of the book, it's got a blank character sheet that you can photocopy and use. It's also got a story slash setting that you can use and run. And it talks about the spirits and the spirit world and how to interact with all that. And it's really a shame that Werewolf the Forsaken didn't do as good as it should have. Because I, I, I like this one better than the Apocalypse. And this one, yes, you're pretty much a glorified border patrol for the spirit world. But at least it's better than being a tree hugger like an Apocalypse. And I know that sounds harsh, but that's just kind of the way I feel. Which brings me to three questions. Would I play a character in this game? And yes, I would. I like the ideas presented in this game for werewolves. Would I run this game? Again, yes, I would. And for a little while, I did. Would I recommend this game? And again, I'm going to say I would. If you want something different, then this is definitely be a book for you to check out. If you want to do something different from regular Werewolf the Apocalypse. I know the New World of Darkness isn't for everybody. It didn't do that great when it came out. But if you're going to check out Werewolf the Forsaken, I would recommend that you go with the second edition book. The second edition book has all of the rules to play in the core book for Werewolf the Forsaken, and you don't need the World of Darkness book. And that's pretty much all I got to say for Werewolf the Forsaken right now. Thank you for joining me at a look at this book. Hopefully you'll join me next time where we'll talk about something else. Bye.